but you're trying to catch a bus which is stopped and when the student is still a distance of i don't know let's call it 40 meters uh it starts to pull away so that's basically like saying this person is running at a constant velocity b naught and then the initial distance is 40 meters and then it starts to accelerate with some acceleration constant acceleration uh that we also know i don't know let's call it like 0.1 meters a second squared or something yeah so this was actually a problem that someone already asked me about uh, i don't remember if i actually helped them or not yet but just first of all i think visual f physical intuition is something that's very good to talk about what's happening at first is that when the bus is still moving very slowly because it's starting from rest and accelerating the person is sort of going to make uh make up a great amount of ground right they're going to make up a great amount of ground because they're moving at constant velocity they're already up to speed whereas the bus is just sort of petering along trying to build it up and the sort of um, conceit behind this problem is uh, so long as the velocity not is fast big enough and the acceleration is relatively small enough there should be a point at which the person uh, meets up with the bus, even as the bus has moved a little bit uh, to the right of its original position. Maybe the person, if they're fast enough, can still catch up. Yeah. But uh, one of the things that's crucial about this question is that 40 meters is not going to be the thing that you just directly plug into your kinematic equation. Because, uh, because uh, really what's happening is this person is going to end up at some distance, let's call it, um, you know, let's call this position uh, X final is hopefully where they're going to both be at the end of some time period, T final, where they meet up. Okay. So that was a bit of a ramble. Um, but when I was thinking about doing this problem, uh, yeah, so one of the things that we want to figure out is what the heck their, um, you know, what the heck X final is in terms of the student's variables. And that should be pretty simple, right? They're moving at a constant speed. So this is just V naught times T, V naught times TF. So just the student's final position should just be the, you know, total time uh, multiplied by their constant velocity. Uh, hopefully that's not controversial. So that's for the student. And then for the bus, it's going to look like um, XF minus 40, right? Because the bus is only going to travel from, uh, you know, the bus is only going to travel a smaller piece of uh, distance. And uh, if XF is the final position on the X axis, you got to subtract out the 40 to account for just the amount the bus is traveling. So XF minus 40 is going to be equal to, let's call it velocity initial of the bus or velocity not of the bus times uh, TF. And uh, remember, I, maybe I should have said this more explicitly, but let's say that time uh, is equal to zero the moment the bus starts accelerating. Yeah, so uh, T is equal to zero at the start. And the idea here is that, okay, velocity not of the bus at the start uh, was zero. So, okay. And then you have to add in one half a tf squared. So at this point, we have, I think we just have two equations and two unknowns, right? We know the velocity not, so I'm going to draw that as a regular underline. And then I'm going to draw a squiggle for tf and xf, because those are what we're trying to find. But you're going to see this theme again and again and again in this class. Oh, remember that we also know the acceleration. But we know we have two equations and two unknowns, so we can totally solve this. Do you all believe me? Yeah. Yeah. And I think from the challenge session um, earlier, I think a lot of people had uh, a little bit of discomfort with solving uh, systems of equations, but uh, I suggest maybe you go practice that a little bit. Um, I guarantee you that it is something you've seen before in high school, just maybe the fact that it's wrapped up in a physics or a college level context makes it seem kind of scary again but I hope it's something that you should be able to practice and get back up to speed if you just, uh, you know, do a little bit of elbow grease. But for what distance does the student have to run at 4.8 meters a second, or sorry, of whatever uh, speed, before she, five meters a second before she overtakes the bus? 
well, okay, that just sounds like it's looking for whatever the position, sorry, whatever the uh, uh, XF value is. And then from the XF value, you can also find the uh, TF value, right? And then if it's asking for how fast the bus is traveling, well, that shouldn't be so bad. So V of the bus is equal to, uh, remember, the initial velocity is zero, so it's just all coming from the acceleration. And that should just be acceleration on the bus times TF. So that's part B. Not too crazy, right? Once you have the, uh, you know, once you have the velocity, excuse me, once you have the time from the previous part, you know, you just plug it in and multiply by A and you're done. And the last part is asking us if the student's top speed is uh, cut in half or something like that. So C is if V naught is smaller, uh, you know, it's like maybe half or a third or something, can she still catch the bus? And uh, this is the part of the problem that gets really interesting. The previous parts are almost just kind of equation plug and chug. But this is the part where things start to get, um, require asking a little bit of physical intuition, right? So what's happening here is if the person is running slow enough, uh, even though the bus has no initial velocity, if the acceleration is relatively fast enough, well, it's going to get away before the person reaches there. Yeah? So what really matters here is the, well, the relative values of V0 compared to A. But how do we quantify this? This is a hard question, but uh, does anybody have any ideas looking at the system of equations? Does anybody know how to quantify this? It's basically saying, you know, if uh, V0 is much smaller, like the value decreases, um, beyond like which threshold will this system stop to have a valid, uh, valid system of solutions? That's kind of what it's asking. Does that make sense? Hoping to get some student input here, because I think it's kind of a, it's a mildly tough concept when you're seeing this in a sort of real world context for the first time. <laughs> X Stacy, do you see what I'm talking about? So initially, if you were to solve for the, her top, uh, wait, no, if you were to solve for her, um, for her VF or V final, which was for the first part with her sure. top speed, would you just like take a side by side as her top speed would be the minimum speed she'll need to catch up to the bus? Or are they just like... Yeah, well, uh, just sorry, I should uh, clarify. I think the question asks uh, not for the minimal uh, speed that still works, but rather just they give you a small speed and asks, does this work? Yes or no. But uh, what oh, okay. I, you know, but that's not too important. What I want to get at is the idea of whether a system of equations has a solution or not. And I think this is a really deep and, well, okay, it's not that deep, but I think this is a relatively important concept to kind of grasp. Um, in fact, I think that someone had a similar problem to this, maybe from a previous homework set, but the idea boils down to the quadratic equation, the fact that this is a uh, order two equation. Um, the idea is that if you replace XF with V naught TF and just sort of, you know, plug that uh, sorry, I don't know why I drew a... Oh, sorry, this isn't an equal sign. This is just the letter F. But the idea is, if you plug in V0TF for this, at this point, this becomes a quadratic equation in terms of TF, right? And the thing about quadratic equations is that, well, how many solutions can a quadratic equation have? Two. Two? Okay. What, what, what other numbers can it have? Number of solutions. I agree. Well, when you, mm -hmm. oh, yeah, when you put it into quadratic equation, you get a negative and a positive solution. Right, but right. okay. So let me just uh, draw this out. Like, if you had a linear, um, if you have a linear uh, equation with a, a non-zero slope, you're guaranteed to have it intersect the x-axis. So you're guaranteed to have one solution, as long as the slope is non-zero. Right. So that's linear. So that's one solution. But with quadratic equations, okay. If it's dipping down like this and back up, that's great. That's two solutions, right? Wherever it crosses the intercept. But uh, with quadratic equations, what happens when you get something like this? 
How many solutions does this have? None. Exactly, zero solutions. So what this question is really asking is, um, when the relative values of V0 and A change, that's sort of essentially saying the uh, quadratic equation is sort of being like, you know, dipping up or down based on how those values change. Like if you can imagine going to Desmos and, uh, you know, using V, like turning V0 and A into sliders, uh, that will basically shift the uh, curve up or down. And oh, it's the, like knowing the transformations of the quadratic equation. Yeah, kind of, right? Like uh, just sort of looking at the equation here, um, you know, the TF squared means that it's going to be a concave up, well, the fact that it's positive, right? Um, but if you have V0 TF uh, plugged in over here, this is essentially saying, um, you know, this is essentially changing by shifting the equation around, shifting the curve around rather. And the question here is, if the value of uh, V0 and A are, you know, relatively small enough or relatively large enough to shift the equation, um, you know, up like this, then it no longer has a solution. And uh, the way to tell, uh, so, okay, now that's the visualization of what's going on. That's sort of the visual of the math behind the physics. But in terms of the actual just a quadratic equation, how do you tell from a quadratic equation how many solutions there are? Would you plug it into the quadratic equation? Uh, sure. But uh, just, yeah, I guess I'm sort of just doing a little brain teaser. Uh, negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. Can somebody remind me how to just take a look at the quadratic formula and uh, tell me what the criteria for zero, one, or two solutions is? Do you all remember the name for this? If you can take the square root of the number. Right, exactly. Then, yeah. yeah, so we just want to, it's basically asking us to look at the discriminant. If uh, the discriminant is uh, positive, that's two solutions. If it's uh, zero, that means there's exactly one solution. And uh, if it's negative, well, unfortunately, uh, a negative discriminant means you can't take the square root, just like our friend suggested. And that means that there are no solutions. So just, I don't know if you've ever seen this before, but essentially a negative value uh, in the discriminant cor correlates to graphs that are sort of uh, lifted up uh, and not touching the x-axis. It could also correspond to graphs just kind of in the other way, too. But, uh, yeah, I, you know, hopefully you've seen that before, but if not, you know, you learn something new. Um, but yeah, do you see why that basically answers that question? Uh, the question was essentially asking us, you know, if given a certain small top speed, will you catch the bus? Well, to do that, you just got to take a look at the quadratic equation in terms of TF, and check the discriminant. And, and if it so turns if out that it the was negative, it would have not been a exactly. Okay. And what that is saying, more or less, is uh, what that's saying, more or less, is that there does not exist any time at which the two of them have the same position. That's what that's saying. Sorry, was someone else uh, pitching in with a question too?